the NBA first overall pick. Outside of winning the Larry O'Brien, it is the most coveted prize of the NBA season. It's a franchise-defining decision that, if made correctly, can take you from being in the lottery every year to a perennial title contender. Now, people often assume that the NBA draft is like how it is in other sports, a crapshoot. And for the next 59 picks, it often is. But the first overall pick is almost always a sure thing. They may not be the next Michael Jordan, but you're almost certainly going to get to select a perennial all-star. Famous busts like Anthony Bennett are special exceptions. First off, often they find themselves in terrible organizations, but more than that, it was due to the special nature of the draft classes. There wasn't a consensus first pick, and some GM was trying to outsmart everyone in the room and go with the player that nobody sees coming. Most years, there's a player that everyone just kind of knows is going to succeed. Think like Shaq or LeBron. Even though Bennett's draft class had Hall of Fame caliber talent like Giannis on the board, the Greek freak wasn't even considered a rotation quality player at the time of his selection and would be a years long project. But what about busts that aren't the result of an unsure draft class or poor scouting? Well, that really leaves us with only one man, Markel Fultz. After a few shaky years in high school being a gangly teen who grew from 5'9 his sophomore year to 6'4 at graduation, Markel Fultz committed to the University of Washington. He expected to be joining fellow NBA prospects Marquise Chris and DeJounte Murray with the hopes of competing for a college title. Unfortunately, they were drafted that same year and left the Washington Huskies with mostly an empty roster. This paved way for the young Fultz to assume the role as leader of the team and he quickly showed he was up to the task. Averaging 23 points, 5.5 rebounds and just under 6 assists a game, Fultz's game was practically fine-tuned to the modern NBA. Drawing comparisons to James Harden and John Wall, he was already showing elite ability in the high pick and roll. With his graceful athleticism, he already attacked the rim like a pro, and if the D dropped back to wall it off, his pull-up jumper was already silky smooth. While college shooting doesn't always translate to the next level, his .413 shooting percentage was respectable. He was an athletic score-first guard who, at a young age, was already showing signs of being a playmaker for others. Sure, his reads were pretty basic, but he was making them consistently, and the ability to read the defense is the exact kind of thing good coaching can teach. The only blemish to speak of was his free-throw shooting. While he wasn't hack-a-shack worthy, averaging around 65% is nothing to brag about for a guard whose game would have him spending a lot of time at the free-throw line. Other than that, he was the safe surefire pick who screamed a modern all-star. And when the Sixers traded up from the third pick, which was used on Jason Tatum to take him to pair with fellow first overall pick Ben Simmons and elite two-way big man Joel Embiid, people in Philly were already counting the rings. After a good, if mundane, summer league performance, Fultz came off the bench his first game, putting up only 10 points, 3 rebounds, and a single assist in his 18 minutes of play. It was underwhelming, but the actual tape looked good. He showed off his defensive potential, and signs of his fluidity on offense could still be found. After a while, though, whispers of a shoulder injury started to surface, and after shooting some of the worst free throws this side of Chuck Hayes, those whispers turned into roaring jeers. His effortless grace from college only months prior was gone. His shooting form was completely different and looked more like Shaq's than a sharp shooting point guard. After only four games, the Sixers decided that they needed to stop the bleeding and pulled Fultz from the rotation. This was the beginning of one of the greatest sports mysteries of the decade. What the heck happened to Fultz's jump shot? The only injury he suffered on the court was an ankle sprain in the summer league, but that couldn't have had anything to do with his shooting motion. There was rampant speculation at the time about his mental health. Information later came out that his mother was a domineering force in his life, which further egged on the army of armchair psychologists to further analyze the young man's psyche. Now, to be fair at the time, Fultz was under a lot of pressure. He was 19 at the time of his drafting and was expected to be part of a championship-winning Big 3 alongside two players who had already justified their hype going into the respective drafts. Add on the fact that the team that drafted him was in Philadelphia, a fan base so infamously toxic they'd previously tossed snowballs and beer bottles at Santa Claus back in 1968 just because the Eagles' record was a lousy 2-11. You couldn't really blame the kid for having nerves, but this was and is something his camp firmly denies was the case. 
Fultz only played the last 10 games of the season, finishing with poor splits of 10 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, and an average of 18 minutes of play. After only playing the first 19 games the following season, Fultz's agent told staff that he wouldn't play or practice until he had his shoulder evaluated. The injury that he was reported to have was an unfamiliar one to many, thoracic outlet syndrome. It's an impingement issue with either the blood vessels or nerves that run between the neck and shoulders. And if you had to pause the video to look it up, hey, we don't blame you because practically no commentator at the time knew what it was either. In basketball terms, it was mostly the cause for Fultz's inability to raise the ball up to shoot as he had done so his whole life. He had told those around him it was like having people pulling his arms down while he shot. Combining that with the very real stresses he was facing as a young athlete, it explained the chaotic form that he'd developed between college and the pros. But given the invisible nature of the condition, even the Sixers staff doubted the validity of the diagnosis. The Sixers GM who drafted Fultz with the first overall pick, Brian Colangelo, even went so far as to plainly say, nothing's wrong with Markel Fultz. Further speculation about his mental health surrounded the guard until in February of 2019, he was traded to the Orlando Magic for Jonathan Simmons, a first round pick and a second round pick. Given the win now position the Sixers had found themselves in, it wasn't surprising for Fultz to be moved. His contract, while still a rookie one, was still over $8 million, which could have been better spent on a much needed 3 and D wing to help space the floor for the poor shooting Ben Simmons. But it was no less crushing for both the team and the player to so quickly give up on a first overall pick. There was a silver lining though. Orlando was a notoriously quiet franchise that unless they had entertaining personalities the likes of Shaq or Dwight, no one really talked about them. It would be a place Fultz would get what any rookie with high upside needs. Time to develop and grow as both a player as well as a person. And it looked like he was going to get just that. Before even playing a single minute, Magic's head coach Steve Clifford said explicitly that they were going to be patient with Fultz's injury and that they were taking it very seriously. An underrated aspect of player development in any sport is the buy-in of the team as a whole. The feeling that the organization has a player's back first and foremost? Fultz rewarded this buy-in by playing 72 games the following season. And while he wasn't going to be competing for an all-star spot anytime soon, he looked like the promising young prospect that he was. He only averaged 20 minutes a game, but in that time he averaged a modest 12 points on .465% shooting and 5 assists. But then, after playing the first 8 games of the 2020-2021 season, Fultz went down hard in a game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. While driving to the basket, he performed a Euro step, and when he planted hard on his left foot, he tore his ACL. He would go on to miss the remainder of the season and has only recently come back into the rotation February 28th of 2022. Now, while we wish the best for Markel Fultz, the many roadblocks that he has faced during the formative years of his career are going to be hard to overcome. We still don't know how much athleticism was robbed by his ACL tear, and he has still yet to realize the incredible scoring potential he had coming into the league. But there is still hope for him yet. The player picked after him, Lonzo Ball, salvaged what many also considered a doomed career. He has revamped his shooting form to complement his incredible passing ability, all the while becoming arguably the best defensive guard in the league. And while his success didn't come while being on the team that drafted him, his new team, the Chicago Bulls, are currently sitting on the fourth seed in the East in a large part due to Lonzo making up for the weaknesses of his teammates, Zach Levine, and a revitalized DeMar DeRozan. Fultz is only 23, which means he still has plenty of time to ensure he has a long, successful career. While he likely won't be the lock-in perennial all-star that the first overall pick is expected to give you, he could go on to be a contributing player on a championship team or just have a long healthy career like fellow bust Kwame Brown. And that is it for today's video. What did you think about the future of Markel Fultz? Do you think he can revive his career and be an all-star? Or do you think he's going to be stuck as a fringe rotation player? Also, who do you think is to blame for Fultz's struggles? Was it on the Sixers player development and trainers? Or do you think it was due to something in Fultz's camp like his personal trainer? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you'd like more videos like this uploaded daily. We'll see ya.